In this very short review session, I'd like to take a look at the management options prompts that you've had on Quiz 2 and take a look at the very different kinds of ways in which this problem can be presented. Now, broadly speaking, here's what you're trying to do. When you have options outstanding in a company that have been granted to managers, your value per share as a stockholder decreases because you've given away a slice of the equity. The question is, how do you incorporate that lost value in your value per share? So I'll take you back a few quizzes and give you a problem which kind of gives you both ways of dealing with management options. So this particular problem, you're asked to review the valuation of shares in a company. The analyst has estimated an intrinsic value per share of $8, but he screwed up. And here's where he screwed up. He got the intrinsic value by taking the intrinsic value of equity and dividing by the total number of shares, including the options outstanding, the fully diluted which is not the right thing to do because that you know, you're ignoring the value of the options, the exit, you're doing all kinds of things you shouldn't be doing. You're told that the company has 100 million shares outstanding, 25 million options, and you're also told that the exercise price, in other words, if you had to exercise these options, this is what you'd have to pay the company, it'd be $6 per share, and the value per option is four. When you value an option, remember you use an option pricing model, you put in a time premium, very different perspective on options. It asks you to estimate the correct value of equity per share. Now this was an unusual problem because you could have solved it in both ways. What are the two ways? There are two ways of dealing with options. The first is to do it right. What is it, what is doing it right involve? Start with the intrinsic value of equity, which in this case would be the $8 per share times 125. Remember the analyst screwed up and multiplied by, and divide by 125. So you get a billion dollars as your value of equity. You subtract out the value of the options. Remember your 25 million options, $4 per option, that's 100 million. You get a value of equity in the common stock of 900. Divide that 900 million by just the outstanding shares. Don't bring in the options, 100 million shares, you get a value per share of $9. That, in my view, is the right way to do things. In this problem, though, you could have done it using the treasury stock approach. What's the treasury stock approach? Here's what you do. You start with a billion dollars in intrinsic value for equity. You add to that the proceeds you would get if the options got exercised today, which is $6 the exercise price times 25, which is 150 you get 1,150. Then you divide not by the 100 million actual shares, but by the fully diluted 125 million shares. You get a value per share of $9.20. You're saying, the two approaches give me different answers. Of course they do. The treasury stock approach ignores the time premium on the option. You're undervaluing the option. It gives you a higher price. But in this particular problem, because you could do both, I'd have given you full credit for either answer. Now, in most problems and quizzes, we have a management option. I give you just enough information to do one or the other. So check the problem. If I give it, I've given you the option value, I want you to use the first approach. If I've given you the exercise price in the option and I don't give you enough information to value the option, use the treasury stock approach. If you're given enough information as you were in this quiz, then you have a freebie. You can use either approach. Don't mix them up. In other words, don't subtract out the value of options and divide by 125 million shares. That's a no-no. Don't add the value of the excess, don't add the exercise proceed and just divide by the 100 million shares. So make sure you pick your path and stick with it because if you mix the paths up, all, will, all hell will break loose. Now let's take a second problem. And this was a really messy one. It'll, you know, I'll tell you up front that people had trouble with this problem and you're going to see why. This particular problem, here's what you're given. You're given uh, that the company had 100 million shares trading at $9 per share, 300 million in debt, and 100 million in cash. Company has 20 million options, which has a value with a value per option of $5. Key is value per option, not an exercise value. And I've told you, an option pricing model is used to arrive at this value. I also tell you, these are key words, that the company shares and options are fairly valued. Then I give you information saying, what the heck? Cost of capital of 10%, return on capital of 20%, growth rate of 2%. And I ask you to estimate the expected after-tax operating income next year. I must have been in a particularly sadistic mood when I wrote this particular problem. But remember, to solve this problem now, you got to work backwards. You got to figure out what the value of operating assets is, but I haven't given you free cash flows, cost, any of the other stuff. But remember, I've told you that the company is correctly valued. So I'm first going to solve for the value of the operating assets. Unfortunately, I don't know it yet. So let me set it up as an algebra problem. Let the value of operating assets be X. To get to the value of equity, here's what you would normally do. You'd take the X, you'd add the cash, which we know, we'd subtract out the debt, 
and then we'd subtract other value options to get to the value of the shares trade. So basically, I started with the bottom of this table and built up. I knew that the value of the shares traded was 900 million. How do I know that? It's $9 per share. If you look at the previous page, it's $9 per share times 100 million. So I know that. Then I started working backwards up the graph. I knew the value of the options because that was given as well. And that was 100 million. 900 plus 100 gives me a billion for the value of equity. I knew the value of the debt. I knew the value of the cash. And you solve for X. And it's not a complicated algebra problem. It's just one equation and one unknown. You come up with a value of equity of 1,200. You know, you're saying, how does that help me? Remember, it's a stable growth firm. I know the value for the equity, uh, the value of the, I'm sorry, the value of the operating assets is 1,200. I know the value of the operating assets, 1,200. To get to that value, I would take the free cash flow to the firm next year. And to get to that, I would have to solve, I would need the after-tax operating in next year, which I don't know. I'll leave that as the unknown. But I'd have to net out reinvestment. That's where the growth rate and the return on capital come in. So this is a problem that combines your terminal value problem with an option problem. Very devious, but remember that if you have a 2% growth rate and a 20% return on capital, you have to reinvest 10% back, which means your free cash flow to the firm is going to be 90% of your after-tax operating income. You're given the cost of capital and the growth rate, and I solve for your after-tax operating. You're saying, hell, this is a test of algebra. Everything in life is a test of algebra. I, I'm sorry that if your algebra is a little shaky, this might be difficult, but again, the key is to recognize what you're given and what you're solving for, and here you're solving for the after-tax operating. So let's review. When you have a problem with equity options in it, first check to see how many options there are and then check to see what you're given. Are you given information on exercise price and proceeds, in which case you have to go with the treasury stock approach, or are you given information on option value, in which case you've got to do it right, value the options and subtract them from the intrinsic value before dividing by the actual number of shares. If you're given both, pick one and do it right. That's about it for options. If you have an options problem, you know what to do. That's it.